Hey, welcome back. I know it's been several days since I've posted a video, and I do apologize for the slow pace of video creation, but I've been busy. Getting ready for Southwest Nationals is a major undertaking. In addition to a snowstorm that made it almost impossible to get any load development done, I've had several other holdups, like work, that have made it really difficult for me to get the load development done on my rifle so I can go to this big match and do things that might be kind of fun. In the interim here, while I wasn't making videos for you, I was sorting bullets. I was actually sorting components in general. I've been sizing brass. I've been annealing brass. I've been working on my primer seating technique. I've been working on my load development. I've been doing seating depth testing on rifles. I've been shooting some. I've been looking at how to make my new stock shoot well and just logistical stuff like changing the oil in my cars. It's been busy around here, so you'll have to forgive me. I have to do life in addition to making videos. In addition to that, I took all the plaques, certificates, and medals down out of the reloading area. Here, let me show you. That stuff was taking a toll on my mental game. I found that I was trying to defend what I had already won instead of trying to win the next match. So off the walls it came and a few acoustic sound panels went up instead. Leave a comment below, let me know what you think of it. Okay, so the camera does not like not having the background behind me. It goes out of focus and stays fuzzy all the time. And that's not very good. Now when I'm over there doing loading stuff, it's not a big deal, but when I'm standing out here, it's a problem. You have to realize I'm in a room that's about nine feet by 10 feet. This is my studio, my reloading room, and my office at all at the same time. It's not a huge facility. Today I want to take the results of my seating depth test on my primary rifle. This was a brand new barrel that I broke in. I showed you that. And then I started doing load development. And I did load development with three different powders before I found one that I actually liked. Now that I have that one powder figured out, and no, I'm not telling you today which powder it is, we can go to seating depth. Now I did seating depth with powder number two. Powder number three likes powder number two's seating depth, oddly enough. As a matter of fact, I've always found that to be true. Maybe it's just luck on my part. Maybe there's something to it. That's for you to decide. When we do seating depth testing on a brand new barrel and we have no idea where it's going to end up, we are going to do our seating depth in a certain way. Now, a lot of people recommend a 3000 increment for seating depth testing. I certainly do, but that comes with a caveat. And that is not to waste more ammunition than you absolutely need to to get the job done. So I'm going to show you how I did seating depth on this one barrel in 27 rounds and that 10 of those were verification groups. So 17 rounds to find the right seating depth for that barrel. Let's start with the underlying assumptions. Seating depth, in this case, has the underlying assumption that I will have a round that is jumping. Why am I jumping this round? I've had good luck jumping this round with this chamber in the past. I decided to do jumping. I was also using a powder that erodes the throat very rapidly. And I need to have about 300 rounds of tolerance before I have to redo the seating depth so that I can go to Southwest Nationals and shoot it for the entire match if I need to. If it's eating 3 thousandths of throat every 100 rounds, that means I got to be more than 9 thousandths into the lands to even remain in the lands at the end of the match without changing the seating depth. And changing the seating depth during a match done blind doesn't sound like a great idea to me. So I'm going to jump bullets for this particular application. Other applications, I do jam bullets, but this one is a jumping situation. So I started at a jump of eight thousandths of an inch from the lands. Now this is a very short jump with a 180 hybrid and typically the 180s don't like this. Let me show you what I got. The number at the top of this group is the 
thickness of the shim in my Wilson seating die. All of this was done at the range with a Wilson seating die and an arbor press. I just loaded the rounds long and then seated them to the seating depth I wanted as I shot them. I work from long to short. There's a good reason for it, and I'm going to show you right here. This first group, I'm using air quotes for a reason, is only two shots. Before you start screaming at the screen about two shots not being statistically significant, let me point something out to you. These bullets are so far apart, I don't care how many more shots you put in there, it's not getting any smaller. From there, I am going to jump to the next seating depth to save ammunition. Because I am longer than the next seating depth, I can take my third round for this seating depth and shorten it to the next one. So we're going to go to 74 shim, right? 3,000 shorter? No, don't do that. The basic concept of what I'm trying to achieve in my seating depth testing is to find a window, not a good seating depth. I'm not looking for the perfect seating depth. I'm looking for a window of seating depths that are tolerant to wear in the throat so I can shoot a long match without having to think about messing with my seating depth. That window, typically in my experience, is about six thousandths wide. So we would have three loads spaced at three thousandths apart that all shot well. If I skip the next increment and go six thousandths, what could I have missed? I could have missed a good load, but that next one I shoot will be good too. So let's just shoot 71 for a shim. And here's that group. Once again, air quotes for group because this is only two shots. What do I see through the rifle scope? I see something I don't want. I see paper between the holes. Let's skip six more. Now we're at a 65 shim. And I get this group. Now we're getting somewhere. This is starting to look promising, but we aren't done yet. Let's skip another six thousandths down to 59. And I get this group. Now's where we go waste three rounds of ammunition. We're going to shoot between them at 62. And we get this. Now I have identified a window between 65 and 59 for the shim that shoots well. Let's determine which one of the two 65 or 62, not 59, I'll explain that in a moment, shoots the best. So I loaded up five rounds of each. Now I don't normally do a five shot group at 100 yards to figure out what shoots best, but I did this just for you. That's why I say I wasted 10 rounds. Now this 62 group, I normally don't put measured groups up for you, but here it is. That one's pretty good. That is every bit of what I'm looking for out of this rifle. Now remember, this is with a powder charge that I decided I was not going to use for my thousand yard load. Why? Well, the velocity changed from the previous shooting session to this session by about 20 feet a second. And to me, that's completely unacceptable. Yes, it's 15 degrees warmer this day, than the previous one when it was 22 outside shooting it, but that gives me a bad feeling when I start looking at that and saying, I'm going to go to a match that I don't know what the temperature is going to be, and I don't know what the powder is going to do. So I switched powders again. I decided that I did not have enough time to chase this to ground, so I put it aside and went to a powder that I know and trust. I did a load development with that, and I'll do a video on that, unfortunately, that becomes, with my experience with that powder, a load, it's really not a load development process, it's a load verification process. So I need to do a little more load development so I can show you how to find the right powder charge for your rifle in a different video. But let's stick with our seating depth for the moment. So now we have two groups at 65 and 62 that shoot well, and we didn't check 59. The reason I didn't check 59 is I shot one more group shorter than 59 and it started to open up. Well, if I know that as the throat gets longer, it may open up as I get further from the lands, if I have a barrel that likes to be chased, 
then why would I load as short as possible? Because I'm going to shoot my way out of my seeding depth node, if you will, sooner and may have a bad outcome or may have to change my seeding depth during a match. I would rather be at the longer seeding depth so I have a little give. Now, the powder that I switched to does not eat throat anywhere near as fast as the one I was using at the time that I shot this. This particular powder eats the throat at about one to one and a half thousandths per hundred rounds. And in 300 rounds, I'll stay in the window. So I took this seating depth and just to give you an idea of the concept of seating depth being separate from powder charge. That next session with a different powder, I was at 63 for my shim. And I shot this group right out of the gate. The cider at the bottom was a dead clean, bare steel barrel. And then I shot five shots. Now I was not chasing the wind for this. The stretch is me, not necessarily the load. When I got done, I shot that same charge again. And I actually did my part of the equation and I got this five shot group. This tells me that my seating depth is probably pretty close. I could probably work on it a little more and that's what I'm gonna go do tomorrow. I'm going to verify that I know where I am in my seating depth window. The simple method for doing seating depth is first to determine what your maximum seating length is going to be for your application. It could be magazine length if you're using a magazine for your rounds. It could be as long as you're willing to go in your situation. In my case, I don't want to jam bullets. I'm just going to shoot too many rounds and chasing the throat doesn't make any sense in my situation. It could be just touching. It could be, in my case, eight off. The reason I use eight off, if, if I may divulge a little bit of information, is that there is a small area, very short jumps, where sometimes you can get into a situation where the ammunition acts like it may be partially jammed on some rounds and not on others, especially as the barrel gets dirty. So I give myself lots of room and eight thousandths is more than you need. It really is. I've seen good results at five thousandths with certain bullets. This particular bullet doesn't like that, never has. We're gonna start at our maximum length that we're willing to work with. And we're gonna shoot a group. As soon as we see that the group is too big to use, we stop firing rounds because we don't wanna waste ammunition. We seat the remaining rounds for that seating depth a little shorter I use six thousandths because I use three thousand increments. And I found that a window tends to be about six thousandths wide. And I shoot another group six thousandths shorter. If that one isn't shooting, after just a couple of rounds, I stop. If it's throwing flyers, if it's doing, if you're three shots into a five shot group and you got something big and ugly, just stop. Save your money, save your components. The shortages are real and I don't want you wasting valuable and precious components doing seating depth testing that you don't need to do. And you continue that process six thousandths at a time until you get one indication of a good seating depth node. Then you go six thousandths more and check that one. So there's two outcomes here. The first outcome is what I had where I hit the upper edge with one and then I hit the lower edge and I went between and I found the middle of it. The other option is you hit right in the middle of it. And then when you go six thousandths more, it's not so good. Now you're going to have to shoot both sides of the one you have to see if you have a window. And that's going to take a little more ammunition than the way it worked out for me. But in reality, it's three more rounds because I only do three shot groups to do this. Longer shot strings are done at longer ranges because that's what counts for the game I'm playing. If you're shooting 100 yard bench rest, of course you're going to do all of this at 100 yards and you're probably going to shoot some five shot groups. But in my case, I shoot threes to do development work and then I verified for you with five shot groups just because. Now I'll admit that these aren't the prettiest groups I can shoot. I was not on the concrete ground or on the concrete slab on the ground with a nice stable setup. I was up on some wobbly wooden bench that was at the range and I mean, guys, if I laid my arm down on the bench when I released the handle on the joystick, the point of aim moved. 
just picking my arm up, up and down off the bench. I wasn't touching it with anything else. Just that hand made the point of aim move. It wasn't the most stable surface ever used, and it still worked. Also, I was using these targets, in my opinion, incorrectly. You'll see in my previous seating depth video that I had them upside down. For this one, I had them right side up, and I was aiming at the circle at the bottom. The problem is with this very high-powered scope that I'm using, I have an itty-bitty little dot in a great big circle. Where am I aiming? It's a little harder to get that perfect hold on each and every shot when you don't have an intersection mark, at least for me it is. Maybe for you it'd be easy, but for me it's difficult and it's a little frustrating. I might have been able to do a little better had I refined my point of aim just a little bit, but it's a 100-yard range with other people on it, and I'm not going to go down there and draw crosses in each one of those circles just so that I can aim. When I figure out I have a problem, I have to wait for them, so I just shot it anyway. If you have questions or have requests for other videos, send them to me at winningintheWind at gmail.com and I'll see what I can do for you. Until next time, go out and do some load development. It's a great time to shoot, and I'll see you in the next video.